All right, welcome everybody to day 12 already of our physical distancing 6 p.m. Pacific live broadcast here from Wolf Camp at the Conservation College at Blue Sky Farm, home of Kim and myself. And Kim is going to do some herbal salve today as well as pine ne needle tea. Did I get that right? Herbal oil. Herbal gonna, oil. The beginnings of yeah, the salve. Yeah, and then we can come around here. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kim will just go over. We showed you the spruce in yesterday's broadcast. Here, and, I have a phone uh, right there so mm -hmm. you can tell them the story. Okay. I'll be right back. All right, yeah, yeah. So, and we harvested this um, uh, Douglas fir uh, when we went out and harvested nettles last week. So you can look at all those broadcasts as you scroll back through the Facebook page of that, that you're on or our Wolf College website under the blog. Uh, we have all of these posted. And... Um, the uh, Douglas, anything in the fir genus or the spruce genus or the pine genus, um, the tamaracks, uh, and what am I forgetting, one or two other genus, genera of, uh, oh, hemlock tree, but it's really uh, kind of more of a fir, and other uh, plants in the pine family are all edible. Now, there are some advisements against using them if you're pregnant on some of the species, so always be careful of that. But uh, these uh, pine family needles are full of vitamin C, so if you ran out of berries that you preserved from last previous year, if you're living off the land, or the um, rose hips are no longer, you know, they've all turned black by, potentially by this time, then uh, you really need to go to pine needles for your vitamin C. As a matter of fact, it had been known before 1850-something, science discovered that vitamin C was the cause of, lack of vitamin C was the cause of scurvy. Um, you know, so many people could have been saved that were traveling across the uh, country or out on the oceans. They could have just taken big vats of these needles and put them into their water and then infused that into their water. So Kim just got back with did you talk Some about spruce. pointy red buds and how to identify? Um, you want me to show no. really close? Let's, well, I'll just show real close the uh, Douglas fir cone. No, and you can just get going on making the tea because uh, we have okay. a lot to do. So we I just want to show this vitamin, yeah. this vitamin, this Douglas fir cone. And I'll put it up close to both cameras. It's a little dark underneath here. But they have these cute little features that look like mice tail and feet. And that's our uh, Pacific Northwest Douglas fir. And uh, if you get botany in a day, which I mentioned in a few previous broadcasts, um, just it's overwhelming to read through the whole thing and get to know all those plants. But uh, what I recommend people do after they look at the introduction is just do the pine family. And then you really get a feel for like, oh, I feel like you know something <laughs> after you've read through the pine family because it's not too long and you figure out how to put it together. So it looks like Kim is... You can just pull off those needles, but it takes a while. But it's a lot quicker just to um, scissor them off because what you want is just the needles. The stems are full of a lot of sap and resin, and that's a very, very strong astringent uh, and maybe more used for medicine. You really don't want the sappy stem taste in your tea. At least I don't. No. And right, uh, Sitka spruce which is a famous tree, all of the, oh yeah, okay, Lily wants to play. You can't play with the next door neighbor, everybody is socially isolating. Up close, they can yeah. see the bugs and everything. Yeah, again, it's a little dark, but. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the, the uh, World, World War I airplanes, that era, the biplanes and such, were made of Sitka spruce. That's how strong and light this uh, pine family plant is. We have to. Well, Lily's just going to keep arguing. <laughs> she wants to play with the next door neighbor dark, but she can't. Poor thing. I know. Okay, All right. Well, we so can continue how, on if you'd like to do this. And is this done just like any tea? Yeah. Well, we do it as a hot infusion, and so we just empty the needles into a French press, and then we will pour some hot water on it, let it steep. You'll actually see your water turn a lovely color, and um, then you can just plunge the French press down and pour it out and drink up. It's really, really wonderful. It tastes great, and I really encourage you to go out and try some of the different pine family trees that we have in this bioregion, like the western hemlock tree, like the Douglas fir. If you've got a noble fir or a, a Pacific silver fir, any of those other trees like that, definitely try those. 
Um, do you want me to talk about the isopropylic acid? I already mentioned it. You a did mention bit. it. I didn't okay. mention that specifically, so, but that's okay. So lodgepole pine. Yeah. Um, Ponderosa pine. Those are the ones Not you want to be careful with. Not those. If you're pregnant, pregnant, especially if you're pregnant, you want to be careful with everything. So, um, anyway, I guess we can move. Ah, I, every time I try to catch it, well, yeah, they might have seen the it. Hummingbird. <laughs> We're gonna give up on the hummingbird. So, anyway, anyway, so basic medicine making. It's really, really simple, and I just want you guys all to know that I am definitely not the and I'll be all expert with something like this, but what I am is a person who is super inspired about using plants for medicine, and hopefully I can inspire you to do it too because it is so easy to do. You can do it at home, and the things that you make, um, if you do it um, wisely, will actually be maybe even better for you than something that you can buy in a store um, because you did it with plants that you harvested yourself, and you did it in your own kitchen or in your own yard which is great and it should be a lot less expensive and you can make it as great gifts for people too and one thing to encourage people who might not have some of these things in stock at their house I thought it'd be a great idea especially with the social or physical distancing that we're doing right now if you were to make a post to your neighborhood friends on your neighborhood sites and say hey I really want to make this great wound healing salve and I'd like to make it for everybody but here are a few ingredients I don't have does anybody have those Please leave them out on your porch and then you can pick them up um, and then make it and then distribute out what you made to everybody so everybody can have a share in it. So anyway, that's my idea for people who don't necessarily have these things in stock. But um, here's what we have today. We're just going to start out with what's called an herbal oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an oil um, and in this particular case I'm going to use this um, organic olive oil that I got from Costco. It's a really great deal and the reason that I'm going to use olive oil <clears throat> From making my medicine or making my herbal oil is because olive oil nobody's really allergic to it and it's really really stable it's not going to go rancid really fast which is great that's exactly what we want something that lasts a long time and so um, use the olive oil there are a bunch of other oils that you can use like jojoba you can use sweet almond oil you can mix it up if you want but the very first one that you do I recommend that you start out with olive oil super simple works for just about everybody and then experiment after that because once you learn how to do it you could just put different ingredients into it and make all sorts of different creations it is so much fun Okay, so anyway, we're gonna start with our olive oil. So, the plants that I've chosen to use today, could you grab the cottonwood buds off? Uh, they're on the tray on the island, okay. and I've got the plantain. I in, brought water in case you need it. I have water. Okay. And, husband, the plantain is in the house in the big black thing that we dried the nettles in, the okay. herb dryer. Okay. So, just yeah. grab the plantain, throw it on the tray, and bring it on out. Okay, anyway, now you know what I'm gonna use. So, first thing I'm gonna start out with is the beautiful bright orange calendula and this is something that I grow in my yard and if you're anybody around this area I'm happy to share some seeds with you so you can plant it in your yard and then after that they are great self seeders so they'll just grow back year after year you can even collect the seeds later and share them with your friends but the calendula that I grow is incredibly wonderful for making medicine because when you're going into harvest those flowers um, you can feel this sticky resin that gets on your fingers when you're harvesting it. It smells fantastic and that is what you want. So you're going to want the flowering top of the calendula. So in this particular instance, because we don't have it growing right now, I've dried some for use. So we're going to use some calendula. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into a jar. It is one of my favorite ingredients to use because it is super safe. It's great for kids. It's very beautiful. It's very gentle and healing and anti-inflammatory so this helps with any sorts of like swelling and inflammation and it's also antiseptic so it's really good on little wounds and abrasions and things like that in this nice oil form so I've got my um, calendula in my jar next thing that I'm gonna add for you guys and gals Oh, actually I wanted to add calendula is actually an edible plant. So if you want to make the most beautiful salads ever, pull off some of the different um, flowers and put them in your salad and everybody's going to want you to bring salads to everything. And there's a possibility that if you have any allergies to plants in the aster family, like ragweed, that you could have some problems with the calendula, but just keep that in mind. Okay, the next plant that we're going to use, this is amazing. Do you want to grab that one over there? This is my very favorite yard weed, and it is called plantain. Now this is not the banana looking plantain. Yeah, you can bring it up closer. This is something that it's considered a weed, which is really, really great in a way because it grows all over the place and it's so good for you. Well, that, I don't know what that's no, that's to fine. Yeah, that's okay. fine. It's just anyway, so you can see the plant. And, um, uh, 
Just show it's the, free. <laughs> yeah. Can you show the identification? Yeah, I'll move it so, to each camera, but the okay, first so I've got is a little one, one here. So there's two different kinds of plantain that grow in this bioregion. There's the lance leaf plantain, which is the one that Chris is pointing to over there, and he'll show it in this camera soon, and this is the one I'm holding up. It looks sharp and pointy like a lance. And what it does is it has these great veins that run all the way up from the bottom to the top of the leaf. And they're super, super strong veins. So when you try to pull the leaf out, sometimes they'll stick out on the bottom, and you have these little veins sticking out, so you know that you've got a plantain. There's other variety that grows in this bioregion. It is called the broadleaf plantain. Now the broadleaf plantain, let's see if you can see that there, it has a broad leaf. Once again, it has the same kind of veins that stick up there, all clustered together in the base of the leaf, and as it emerges up into the broad part of the leaf, they all fan out to long, strong veins. And the margins, which is the outside edge, well, that's a good idea, the outside edge of the plantain is... Um, not serrated or anything, not jagged, not wavy, not anything. It's just a beautiful, nice, clean, smooth margin. So, you've got your lance leaf and your broad leaf. Now, can I see the broad leaf? Yeah. It grows all over the place. You just want to harvest it in a place where your dogs haven't gone potty. It'd be great. Um, or any, obviously, any place that's polluted. Don't want to harvest it there. So, plantain is also an antiseptic plant and it's astringent which means it's drawing and if you eat it it's totally safe to eat it's really bitter but unfortunately um, that means it doesn't taste very good so a lot of times people will just throw it into a pot and cook it into a stew or something like that and that's fine so remember totally bitter astringent drawing so what we like to use plantain for at camp is for bee stings so we're always getting stung up by bees somehow the underground yellow jacket hive crawling on the ground we run into them get stung so what we do is we always have the kids know their plantains and they run out and they grab a plantain and they stick it in their mouth and they chew it up it tastes terrible but it's okay and let your teeth break up those cell walls, spit it out, stick it on your bee sting, and I promise you, within about a minute, that sting's going to go away. And the stuff that's left in your mouth, you just want to eat it, just swallow it, because it's really good internally and externally. Do you want to add anything to that? No, that's great. Okay, I'm going to just take that off. But anyway, so we want to put it into our um, herbal oil that we're going to be making, and so I just... Holding, wash off my uh, before you start going, let's move the table back just a little more because okay. the, um, your camera is totally so backlit. Mine's, the, mine's for some reason really working where it's taking care of the backlit. Not so much in yours. There we go. Maybe Kim won't be quite as backlit now. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess that's not as bad. Okay. Okay. What do I need? Um, do you want to do some more needles in there? Sure. Okay, so what I did was I harvested the plantain earlier today, and as you know, oil and water don't mix very well, and so what we wanted to do was wilt the plantain a little bit. So I rinsed it off because it had a lot of dirt on it, give it a good rinse, and then I laid it out on some paper towels, and then I put it in my hanging herb dryer. It's this beautiful mesh herb dryer, which I can show you guys later. That's horse again. Oh, okay. How's that? That's better. Oh, okay. um, so anyway, um, I wilted it because we're getting enough water out of the plant that we're not going to have problems with water in our herbal oil. If you get water in your herbal oil, it can cause the material that's in there to mold and let things grow that you don't want to grow. So that's a problem. So you want to be really careful with that. So get it nice and wilty. And I actually did a mix of both kinds of plantain. I'm going to chop it up just to increase my surface area. And you can buy really cool scissors that look like multiple scissors in one pair that chop things really, really fast. I just got my regulars today. So I put that in my jar. One other thing about a plantain, if you've ever heard of Metamucil, um, the seeds from a plantain, not the variety that grows around here, but another, another species of that um, genus, um, produce a psyllium seed, which is what it is used to make Metamucil. So if you have that problem and you need that remedy, you can harvest the seeds off of any of the plantains that are around here and utilize it for that. It just makes you drink lots and lots of water. Anybody over a certain age needs a little extra fiber. A lot of people need extra fiber. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, other thing about plantain that I just wanted to add, if you didn't want to make it into an oil, you can use it as a wash or um, like make a an infusion, put it in some hot water, make like a hot tea out of it, and then put a washcloth in that and use it to clean your wounds as well. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to put in is going to be my favorite thing to put into this herbal oil. And this is, these are, if you can see them, cottonwood buds. Mm. 
and they smell simply luxurious, any, and they will make your they will make your sap smell just fantastic. Yeah, any buds in the genus poplar, pop, populus. Populus. populus, populus, popular tree, popular, popular trees. So we have a big. We showed you the big Lombardi popular, popular, popular <laughs> yesterday. Uh, where I grew up in Minnesota, Wisconsin, we had um, a couple different kinds of poplar trees. Okay. Cottonwood is uh, anyway. wonderful cotton. So some people like to call this balm of Gilead, the resin that comes out of it, but this is not the same as the balm of Gilead that you read about in the Bible. It's a completely different kind of plant, um, but still fantastic. And so this is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and analgesic, well, which means... Just to clarify, uh, in the Bible, the balm of Gilead is just... It's a not balm. exactly a plant. It no, just means a, well, a balm. Well, there is. Yes. They've identified that there is. But anyway, okay. neither here nor there, but it's from the Gilead region. Anyway... Analgesic, which is what I wanted to say about it, because it actually helps with pain. And so if you get a big bonk or you got some pain with some swelling, even maybe some joint pain, you can use these guys on it. So let's put these into our oil. And what you want to do is harvest them when they're nice and resiny. And the best thing is after a windstorm, you can go over to your local park or even your yard if you're lucky and get branches that have fallen down so you can reach them. Otherwise, they're really high. But you want a branch that's not actually laying on the ground where it could get dirt and other things into the buds because it'll stick like crazy. You want something that's up off the ground after a windstorm is ideal. So anyway, we've got these beautiful, beautiful buds, and we're gonna put this inside as well. If anybody has a history of the Balm of Gilead, I actually think it's an American pioneer invention from the 1700s. Uh, the Americans actually named it Balm of Gilead. Well, I can do some more research. Yeah. That's just, that's just what comes to mind. If anybody wants to put it in mind. the comments uh, on Facebook or our website, go ahead oh, and do that, whatever so research you come up with. A couple more things that I wanna add about the um, cottonwood buds. Um, the resin is what you want, that nice sticky stuff. Now, if you harvest them and you're not going to use them right away, best thing to do is wrap them in some wax paper and put a little paper towel underneath it and throw it in the freezer. And that way you can use it all season long or anytime you want, actually. Um, and that's what I actually did was harvested and froze them and I just thawed them out um, this morning to let them kind of dry off. So anyway, I've got my plant material in my jar. Now, to make the herbal oil, all I have to do is add the oil to it. Easy as that. Now there's two methods um, to get your oil done, really. There's time and there's heat. So if you have the time to wait for your oil to be completed, you can put your oil into the plant material and then you can stir it up so that all of your plant material is covered and then you can put it away. Actually, I like to stir mine every couple of days if I can. So keep it someplace where you'll see it, like in the bathroom where you brush your teeth. Um, I stir it for every, every couple of days to make sure that all the plant material is covered. I like to use a chopstick to do that. And then in about a month, um, give or take, some people do a little less, some people do a little bit more. In about a month, though, your oil is going to have received all of the great um, medicine out of the plants. They will be in the oil, and then you can proceed from there and did we'll talk. Did you talk about how it should be dried or wilted so that there's not a lot of moisture in there so it doesn't I did. start to spoil? Okay, I did. Wonderful. So anyway, that's one <laughs> way. You can use, right. you can use, hi Pasha, you can use um, uh, thyme in order to make your herbal oil. Now, if you don't have thyme, you can also use heat. And so what you want to do is you want to take either a pilot light, a crock pot, your stove, something that offers you a little bit of heat. And you want to be able to heat up your oil enough that it's warm, but not super hot because you don't want to burn your oil and you don't want to cook your herbs because that will totally destroy what you're trying to do. But you want it so that you can put your spoon in, you can touch the oil, get a little drop on your spoon, and put it on the inside of your wrist. And it should feel warm, like you're doing making baby food. So something that's not gonna hurt something, but it's gonna be warm. That's what you want. And you wanna let that sit for, well, at least a couple days if you can. I mean, I guess, I guess maybe an hour at the least, but, but definitely as long as you can to give your oil time to extract all the good stuff out of your plants. So anyway, um, I put it in a jar like this. I take a little ring put it underneath it, and then, oops, can you take that out of there? And I put it in a pot full of water, and I put this on the stove on low, and I monitor it. Um, if you have a pilot light, like I said, you can put it on the pilot light. And then after a couple of days, we'll process it even further. 
and we'll talk about that on another day how to turn it into a salve but the reason I like to start with an oil is because it's wonderful medicine it's a great base in which to make other things so you can make lotion bars you can make lip balm you can make um, well salve for one all sorts of different things out of this material this once you got it going. This is external use right? This is external. You never take internal unless under advice of a homey Naturopathic, Naturopathic physician. physician. Yes, yeah. but um, if you're putting product in there that's safe to eat, it doesn't matter if you use it as lip balm. It's okay. But if you're using something like arnica, which is not to be used internally except under the direction of a doctor, um, then you wouldn't want to use it internally or put it on as a lip balm. So anyway, um, but the reason that I really like to show oil also, even though it's a little bit messy, is let's just say that you have some sort of a wound and you want to put your um, healing stuff on there, your healing medicine on there. If your wound is like a deep cut or a puncture wound or something like that, if you've already gone to the next step and added your beeswax to turn it into a solid, into a salve, um, and you put that over your deep cut or over your puncture wound or your super hot burn or something like that, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting a sealant over the top of it. And if you haven't cleaned it out well enough um, or if there's any bacteria in there, you're basically just sealing it in and then it turns into a, it's an anaerobic environment and then your bacteria can go crazy and lots of whoa got by that was cool um and lots of bad things can happen from there ju junk all and bush tips there. Oh, sweet anyway yeah, bad things in. happen so you really want to know when to use each one of the different medicines um i don't think there's anything else i want to add about that should we um, pour water in yeah sure i'd love to have a drink of this pine needle tea before i start singing uh, oh, I had one more thing to do. Do we have time? Oh, sure. It's <laughs> yeah, funny since I'm going to be Actually, singing a while. You, you pour this in, uh -huh. and I'm going to show the next okay. thing. Okay. Next. Speaking of do we have time and singing wild mountain time, guess what I have? I have some beautiful time. So, we talked about the two ways to make an herbal oil. One of the ways is using time which means you're going to put your herbs in oil and you're going to let it sit for maybe a month and then strain out your plant material and then you're left with your infused oil. And of course at that time if you strained it out and you're like, oh this is really awesome but I would love to make it even stronger or I totally forgot to put in my calendula and I'd love to add that in there, guess what? You can take that oil that's already extracted that plant material and put in more material or put in a different material. There's nothing that stops you from doing that. So um, I was just going to show you really fast how to make thyme oil, which is wonderful for salads and things. So here's some thyme that I just harvested out of my yard, and what we're going to do is put it in our mortar and pestle, or put it in our mortar, use the pestle, and grind it up just a little bit. We're just breaking it up to let all those wonderful... Well, I probably put too much in here, but I think you guys get this. Oh, yours is reconnecting. What? Oh, it's time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Up and then Great. Well, remember, I've pounded the thyme a little bit. I would do it more than that. Throw it in my jar. Cover it with oil. Put it in the bathroom where I brush my teeth. Stir it every couple of days just because that's how I do it. And after a month, I've got something great for my salad. So. Turn it over to you, husband. Did you already share uh, Rosemary Gladstar's medicinal no, herbs? I didn't. Yeah, if you can get a hold, I know Amazon. Amazon's not really shipping much besides essentials right now, but uh, Rosemary Gladstar's medicinal herbs: A Beginner's Guide is really what Great. we recommend. It's all you need for the first year for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, and it teaches you how to grow everything, and it tells you if there's any contraindications, if it's safe. It's really, really wonderful. So. All right, so. Um, Again, I want to encourage everybody to go outside and um, as much as you can. And also, um, if you have time, help your local community with this uh, crisis we're going through. And if you have any money, spend it on some small businesses. And uh, go down to the bottom of the text in what you're looking at right now. And you can see where you can donate to keep our employees employed this spring. As well as... Um, uh, tomorrow we're going to do more, a little more herbalism, but we'll cook up some wild edibles from the yard. Um, show you, we'll have our camp stove here. I'm also going to show you a trick on how to refill those little uh, green canisters. Oh, cool! Yeah, so you don't have to keep throwing those away all the time. Yeah. And um, 
Uh, next week we'll continue with an orchard tour. Uh, we're going to do a neighborhood sidewalk garden installation. However, it's been raining all week, so it's hard to work with the soil <laughs> out there. Yeah, we'll bit. see. And we're going to revisit the greenhouse, see how the plants are coming up that we planted the very first um, session we did 10, 11, 12 days ago. And uh, come back to some language of the birds um, that you're hearing now and what all these songs and calls mean. And we'll also do some animal tracking adventure. Um, and then start thinking about what you'd like us to do because we'd like your comments on future broadcasts. This uh, is a great book from back in the day, Rise Up Singing. And I've noticed that these broadcasts are a bit like being at summer camp. <laughs> it's pretty much how it goes. We always start with a song or story and end with a song or story. Oh, we should do story. Stories some one of these times oh, yeah. coming mm -hmm. up. Some of our epic stories so from camp. Play a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so th I might do a few songs out of this just to kind of keep it campy, but also come back in the future to um, some uh, more obscure songs that are some of the Wolf Camp favorites. Oh, the summer time. No, sing it if you know it. Oh, the summer time is coming. Yes, it is. And the trees are sweetly blooming. And the wild mountain thyme grows around the purple heather. Will you go, Lassie? Go? And we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain thyme all around the purple heather. Will you go, Lassie? Go? Oh, I will. On crystal flowing fountain And on it I will pile all the flowers of the mountain Will you go, Lassie, go And we'll all go together to pluck wild of some bird feeders and of course now that we moved they moved left <laughs> classic okay well be well everybody we'll see you tomorrow